The foundation I want to lay is what I call the rule of five. The rule of five is the five characteristics I look for in my partners. The things that are important that give me a great amount of certainty that you're a business worth staking. Number one, your yeses have to be yes and your noes have to be no. You're an executor. When you tell me you're going to do something, you do it. And if you're in my circle, meaning I'm the one directly managing you or leading, I will likely give you little tasks first. Why would I do that? Because I'd rather figure out who you are when the risk to reward is pretty minimal. How do you handle the little things? How do you do the little things? Can you execute on sending me settle up every night? Can you execute following up with me at the end of the day when you said you would? Can you execute in hitting your goals when you say you would? Can you execute in having that tough conversation when you said you would? I need to know that you're somebody I can trust. Can you execute? Are your yeses yes? Are your noes no? Number two, I need to know that you are passionate about the business. Also, if you're still getting your ass kicked, when you go home, because you can't explain to your parents or your loved ones what you're doing, you haven't figured it out yet. You think anybody gives me shit? Ever gave me shit? Even when I was a rep? No, because I clearly know what I was doing. I understood the industry and I understood why it was a phenomenal opportunity and I could explain it. That's why one of the greatest compliments I ever hear is when people go, I'm different because of you. Or their spouse goes, this dude used to not wake up before 1130 every day. He's, he's out the door before nine. I've never seen this guy in a suit. Now he's in a suit every day. He talks different. He thinks different. That to me is far more valuable than any one accomplishment you'll make along the way. It's number two. Number three. That's actually four. We'll go back to three. Write this in all caps. Don't be a baby bird. Most of you are like, I don't get it. Well, if you've ever seen a baby bird, it sits in the nest. Mom and dad, go get food, eat food. Pre-digested food is then puked back into baby bird's mouth. And that's how baby bird gets fed. You're like, what does this have to do with humans? A lot. There's a lot of humans that do not take their growth and education seriously. They're waiting for somebody else to do the work. They're waiting for somebody else to read the, pe the book, listen to the podcast, pre-digest it, and then puke it back into your mouth. Yes, it's visual on purpose. It's fucking gross. Don't be a baby bird. Take your education seriously. Know how to go get what you need. See, we know we're not living in the, the age of knowledge. We're past the age of knowledge. Knowledge is at everybody's fingertips. We're living in the age of conceptualization, meaning you're rewarded not by finding knowledge, but knowing what to do with knowledge. Yeah. Do you see the difference? That's on you. We have more access to information than the president did 10 years ago. Fuck crazy. What's the difference between somebody who doesn't read and somebody who can't? Nothing. Don't depend on other people to develop you. Develop yourself. If I hear you say, oh, but my owner, my leader, as if it's their fucking responsibility. It's on you. Don't be a baby bird. Number three, I need to know you can handle failure. I am an imperfect human being. I have failed a fuck ton. I have made a lot of dumb mistakes. I've said a lot of things I wish I could take back. None of it has stopped me from succeeding though because of how I respond to failure. See, failure isn't final, quitting is. I need to know you can handle failure. It's gonna happen. You're gonna have that week when your check is tiny. Because you're telling me, I, I had no idea what my check was gonna be. I was just hoping it was gonna be awesome. And then when it's not, whose fault is it? Not yours, of course not. It's the client, it's the customer, it's me. You're fucking holding my money. Your check sucked, it's because of you. But I'd like to see that. How do you handle that? How do you handle that small check? Do you become the victim or the victor? Do you blame others or do you hold yourself accountable? How do you handle failure? Hate to tell you this, people are gonna die. People are gonna get divorced. People are gonna get sick. Successful people do not have different problems. They have different solutions. Life isn't fair, life isn't easy. And just because it's not, doesn't mean you're fucking it up and somebody's trying to punish you. How do you respond to failure and adversity? Successful people, the high performers, they have bad days. It just lasts 15 minutes, not a whole fucking week. I love it when I do goals and somebody's like, oh man, just off this week. The whole week? Yeah, my mind was in the cloud. The whole week? Just had some personal shit going on this, the whole week? Fuck, I'd love to be in your situation that I have the luxury of taking the whole week to, oh my God, that's a first world fucking problem. High performers, 10 minutes. Greed, you got 10 minutes. Get over it, you got 10 minutes. I'm being a little bit facetious. Some things don't go away in 10 minutes. Just once you get the principle. You're not gonna just sit and wallow in it. How do you respond to failure? It's gonna happen. And I make bets on people that know how to bounce back. I was negative $187 in my business bank account in 2012. I'd taken myself off my salary I hadn't taken a salary for six months, not a paycheck, not one. If anybody would have asked me during that time, hey, how was he? Nobody would have fucking known. And I wasn't any less certain of the ultimate outcome. 
thank God I don't have fuckstick friends, but if I did and I went to them, I'd go, hey, what would you do in my situation? I haven't taken a check in, oh, six months. My bank account's in the negative. I went from 50 guys to six guys. What do you think most of my friends would have said if I had the wrong kind of friends? Bro, this business is balls. It's not you. Go get another business. Nah, don't even go get another business. Go work for somebody. It's way more secure. Oh yeah, the illusion of safety. Friends matter. And if you're down right there, you're like, oh fuck, you know what, you're right. What am I doing? This is crazy. Why would I go through all this? By the way, I was working 70, 60, 70 hour weeks. There was a time there where Hep, they go, hey, you wanna run a meeting? I'm like, not really, but I want you to run a meeting. Okay, what do you want me to run it on? Can you just talk about when you should have quit and you didn't? Sure, let's do it. Part of it was there was no part in my mind where I was like, yeah, I'm gonna quit this bitch. I didn't even think that way. It's not failure, it's how you respond to it that matters. And I look back at that time with a lot of gratitude because I learned a lot of fucking lessons. Mainly, don't run a hospital, run an army. And until then, I was running a hospital. More like a ministry. You gotta have a good risk to reward decision matrix. Nothing good happens after midnight, leave team night before midnight. Also, one drink, that's it. You know how many people I've seen get DUIs on the way home from team night? What is that? Poor risk to reward. Hey, would you rather pay $50 for an Uber or die? You fucking tell me. It's much different than than building a million dollars than there is in keeping a million dollars. One of the things you start talking to successful people that have been successful year in and year out, decade after decade, that have kept wealth, they're always looking for asymmetrical risk to reward. Meaning, the reward far outweighs the risk. And if you just get in that mode, you're going to change a lot of outcomes in your life. You think it's wealthy people buying lottery tickets? You laugh. Do you know we spend more on lottery tickets than fucking books in the United States? What does that tell you? We got poor risk to reward freaking set up there. So this is the work and you, and that's the five. And for me, you have to pass all of them. It's pass fail on all of them. And if you don't, until you do, you don't have an opportunity in my business. I'm not going to stake you because Every time I've seen somebody fail in my organization, they blew up one, if not multiple of those five. Every time. And I look back and I go, oh, that's what happened. They just weren't following the five. So if you can't get that shit under control, it's just not time yet. Now I'm not saying you don't have a, you don't have a position in my business. As long as your character isn't horrific, I'll be patient with you in my business, but I'm not gonna stake you in a brand new business, because here's why. When you come out from underneath this covering, everything you are to the negative will be multiplied. Why? Because there's no covering anymore. He calls me and he goes, my people just don't wanna work hard. They're super indifferent. They're not working hard in the field, they're not doing the right thing. I go, well, what are you doing? He goes, well, I go home and play video games and get high. Okay, I appreciate your honesty. I pause, I don't say anything. And he goes, well, my people don't know that. And I'm like, Yes, they fucking do. Yeah, you're really gonna get your people to jump through fucking walls doing that. You can't ask your people to do something you're not willing to do. Every time I've seen somebody fail, it's one of those five. And it's usually a multiple of them. 